they're gonna go through the same crap. Right now, they're in that honeymoon phase, they're in that love bomb stage, they think everything is great. They have no idea what's coming. Once that stops and the pattern repeats and the disorder kicks in and the devaluation starts and the new shiny object shows up and they start grooming that and their, their focus goes towards that, that new supply is gonna be drowning in quicksand too. Welcome back, warriors! My name is Kira, this is Psychopath Exposure, and you know what we do here. Well, if this is your first time that I'm going to tell you. We talk about psychopaths, narcissists, antisocial personality disorder, cluster B personality disorders, infidelity, betrayal, manipulation, triangulation, and all sorts of Asians. Not Asians, Asian agents. Okay, well I screwed up that intro too, so let's just jump right into it. Um, comment came in from Matthew Powers that I love because it's so specific and so powerful. It has to do with, you know how the narcissist, they jump to the new supply and they start throwing pictures on social media, how great their life is, and now look at them traveling with a new supply, doing all the stuff that they were gonna do with you that you guys used to talk about doing, or that maybe you used to do, and now they're doing it with someone else. You know what I'm talking about. This is why you shouldn't be looking at their social media. No contact, remember, no contact. Anyway, Matthew Power says, they're flaunting of the happiness that they found with the new supply is multi-layered. A, it makes them look good. B, it makes the new supply look good. C, it makes it look as if you couldn't provide this level of happiness to the narc, thus further proving the reason as to why they left you for the new supply. D, the smear campaign that they use to damage your name and provide the reason for running to the arms of the knight in shining armor is validated. E. Like quicksand, if you fight back at all to clear your name and refute the narc's claims, makes you look crazy and gives the lies truth, giving the narc an alibi for leaving, the new supply credibility for saving them all the while, your stocks, your stock sinks. The narc is their problem now, and the people, the flying monkeys, that buy into the fairy tale are not worth your time nor energy. Walk away and work on yourself. Fantastic, powerful comment, Matthew Powers. Thank you for flexing your power. Dad jokes. Sorry. Look, let's take this one at a time. Number one, it makes them look good. Of, of course it makes them look good. They're polishing their, their social media now with all these pictures of their travels and their activities and festivities with the new supply. Look how happy. Look at the happiness. Look at the smile on their face with the poor sucker that, that's just worshiping the ground that the narcissist is walking on. Makes them look amazing. But you know, if you see the comment below, underneath Matthew's, this was a reply to Matthew by Stevie Irwin. Stevie said, I don't understand. So they think everyone believes they have a new shiny knight every four months? <laughs> and that's the thing, guys. People are not stupid. The thing is that people don't care because people are living their own lives and they have their own shit going on. They have their own dramas and traumas. But the ones that are paying attention, the ones that really care about you, the, the, those one or two people that really, really have taken the time to understand what you're going through, they're going to see this. And believe it or not, even some spectators are not, are not even close. They'll notice. They'll be like, oh yeah, that person, they got a new boyfriend every three or four months. That dude is dating a new chick every week. 
they, they see that. They just don't invest their emotional time, their emotional real estate in it because they're, they're not attached to this. It doesn't concern them. But now, once you've been through it and you see that it all makes sense and, and you get all passionate about it, but like Matthew Powers says, it, it only empowers the narcissist. You know, so yeah, of course it makes them look good and it makes the new supply look good. Everyone's looking great, except for you. What it's doing for those that knew you certainly makes it seem like, hey, you couldn't, you couldn't make this person happy. You were not good enough for this person. And here came along somebody right away, pretty much anybody, could have been anybody, and it usually is, and they're already replacing you. They're filling your shoes. That, that confirms the facade that you weren't good enough. It confirms that you were trash, because that's what the narcissist tries to make you look, you know, because they always project, right? So you can't be looking at that social media because it's going to enrage you, it's going to trigger you. If anything is gonna add to your crushed self-esteem, and you're just making the narcissist look better. The, yeah, the smear campaign that they did, or are doing, to damage you, telling everybody how bad you were, what a horrible person you were. Well, you start doing all sorts of stupid shit now, and it's only going to confirm it. it, don't, it that's exa it's like you're, you're walking right into their trap. So, like, I, li I like the analogy that you say, like quicksand, because if you guys have ever stepped in quicksand, Hopefully not. The more you struggle, the worse it gets for you. It's like, you, it's better if you just remain motionless so that your descent into your doom is slow and maybe at the last minute someone reaches out with a branch or a rope and you can pull you, and they, they can pull you out. But if you struggle and you start spazzing out and freaking out, you're just gonna sink before help even arrives and um, that's the thing with a narcissist and you start seeing the shit they're putting on social media it's gonna make you look crazy if you start reacting to that oh my god if you start replying to those pictures if you start commenting if you start telling all your friends if you start making a spectacle out of it all the narcissist has to do is like look look I told you look at he's crazy She's a nutcase, look at her, crazy. Walk right into the trap. And I understand why, of course, if this is your first rodeo with a, with a narcissist like this, your brain doesn't understand how someone that was your partner, that you trusted, that you loved, how could they do something like this shamelessly, so fast, so cold, so brutal? You walk right into the trap. Everyone's telling you, hey, stop. Yo, let, let that shit go because that person is fucked up. And clearly, someone that just monkey branches to someone else, anybody else, just weeks or a month after you guys split, after the history that you guys had, it shows what, a, what type of a person that is. Even even if they don't understand what narcissist personality disorder, and it shouldn't even matter, it, it shouldn't. Just the fact that they can do something like that shows how shallow they are. It shows how little you meant to them, how little your relationship and, and whatever you guys had, it shows how little that actually meant to your abuser, because that's who they were, they were your abuser. So, if your narcissist ex is already in a relationship with someone else, good! Good. That's the other person's problem now. They're going to end up just as fucked as, as you. Guaranteed. They're going to go through the same crap. Right now, they're in that honeymoon phase. They're in that love bomb stage. They think everything is great. They have no idea what's coming. Once that stops and the pattern repeats, 
and the disorder kicks in and the devaluation starts and the new shiny object shows up and they start grooming that and their, their focus goes towards that, that new supply is going to be drowning in quicksand too, desperately trying to save the relationship, doubling down, tripling down, flapping, flapping their arms in that quicksand and then the narcissist is just going to be stepping on them. It's going to happen. Just got to give it time. But if you can learn to shift your focus away from that, like let me give you a quick example because I, I want this to be a short video. If someone just showed up with a suitcase with a million dollars in cash, tax free, it's yours, and you have to spend it, you have to spend the million within one year, however you want, tax-free, there are no strings attached, there are no catches. The only catch is that you have to spend it. Do you think that you're going to be this fucked up about the narcissist? Because let me tell you, I mean, I think about that all the time. I don't know how we even came up with this shit, but is, man, if I had a million dollars in cash right now no matter what any type of narcissist um, manipulator toxic person has done it's like wait a second so you mean to tell me that instead of staying in bed crying under the under the sheets ruminating depressed you mean to tell me i got a million and i can go travel anywhere in the world i can take whoever the fuck i want i can pay for my friends to come with me. I can go eat anywhere I want, buy anywhere I want, business class all over the fucking world. You mean to tell me I, I can do this? Oh shit, like, thank you. Thank you, narcissist, for fucking the relationship up because I get to do whatever the fuck I want now and I'm probably gonna meet amazing people in the process. My vibration's going to rise, stress-free, nothing to worry about, no need to work. It's like, holy shit, like that happened. And now I got a mail to do whatever the fuck I want. I can take whoever the fuck I want. And I don't got to be, I don't got to stay in the same city where the narcissist lives. I can disconnect my phone get a new phone, just start a new life all over the world. You know how long it takes to spend a million dollars unless you're an idiot? It's gonna last you a long time. Just don't be stupid with it, but think of how many countries you could visit, the hotels that you could stay at, the foods that you can eat, the sights that you can see, the experiences that you can have, the roller coasters that you can ride on. Not emotional roller coasters like with these snake predators. I'm talking about real roller coasters where your adrenaline's kicking in and you're just screaming and you're just in that moment, just present. There's so much that you could do. Can you imagine that? I mean, just talking about it gets me excited. And these are the type of thoughts that you need to start entertaining, getting yourself up, getting your vibration up, rising, raising, uh, one of the two, pick, rising or raising. Raise that frequency, raise that vibration. Just raise it, get excited about life again, and just imagine, imagine that, and it will manifest. You may not get a suitcase of a million dollars, but things, when you really believe that they're gonna happen and you get excited about it, somehow the universe has a way of bringing that into your life. It may not be exactly as you want it to be, but a lot of times it's better. You never know, someone may just offer to take you somewhere. I had a buddy once when I got out of the psychopath uh, situation many years ago. And he's like, hey man, look, he was, he was going to move for, for his job. His, he had to move across the country. And he's like, dude, how would you like to help me move? Because I have to drive across the country with all my shit. How would you like to come with me? All expenses paid. My company's going to pay for everything. You, hotels and food is paid. I was like, sign me up. I was like, are you kidding? 
like after the shit that I have that I was just going through, going nuts, I get to travel across the country road trip and oh my god, it was like the time of my life. The gratitude that I had is like I went through that, but look at what God has given me now. Let me tell you, that was a, a life changer. I just couldn't believe visiting all these places, all these cities, everything, and, and just looking at, oh my God, I just couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, look what came out. Look at the, the silver lining that came out of this. But that's only because by that time, I was already focused on raising my frequency, focused on getting the hell out of the house, even, even though I didn't want to, getting out there and doing shit, actively doing shit, so that I wouldn't just stay in that same dark bubble ruminating, oh, woe is me, oh, oh, why did she do this? Oh my God, is a psycho, oh my God, because that was terrible. I mean, the level of anxiety and panic attacks that I was having, because I just couldn't stop thinking about that. Of course not, how can I not? When I was just under the fucking covers all fucking day. Not wanting to do shit, not wanting to hit the gym, not wanting to eat, not want. The minute I started doing those things, it wasn't easy, but I started doing them. Why? Because I made a commitment between myself and God. And I drew that line and said, from this moment forward, no matter what I feel, I'm going to do the things that I need to do. What my mentor is helping me and guiding me to do, I'm, this is what I'm going to do one day at a time. One day at a time. And things slowly started changing. Until everything just came all at once, just flooding in. It's like, wow, has my life gotten better? And I would never have even dreamed of doing those things, nor visiting those places while I was in that toxic, doomed-to-fail relationship with that snake. So think about what I just said. Get excited. Get excited about something. Think, think things that... Like, do not put a ceiling on it. Just imagine, imagine, imagine everything that you ever want. To just believe it, even if you're just telling yourself, just do it, just do it. Just get excited like, like, like a little kid that gets excited about all these things because the kid doesn't have trauma and there's no ceilings to his imagination. Do that. Do that and you're going to see how little neurotransmitters in your brain are going to start changing and getting rewired and, and navigating new pathways. Little by little, those things start to change and you start getting excited about life and things again. And all of a sudden, who gives a fuck what the narcissist is doing and the new supply and what they're posting on Facebook and what they're posting on Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok and bullshit. Get off all those sites. Fuck that. Who cares? You're living a badass life. You can. You can do it. All right? So I hope that gives you guys a little bit of inspiration. It's what worked for me many, many moons ago. And it's what I continue doing anytime I find myself in a funk. If you need help with this, if you can't grasp, if you can't really like put your finger on how it is to change your thoughts and to actually imagine a better life, I do have a coaching program where I work with survivors of narcissistic abuse to doing this very same thing. I have a link in the description. If you need more information and details, just click on that. It's a private one-on-one -on -one coaching program that we conduct over Zoom, and you're gonna see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And you're going to get excited to following that light. All right? That's all I got for today, guys. Just keeping it short, but keeping it real as always. My name is Kita. This is Psychopath Exposure. Drop a like on the video if you got some value. Share the video and leave a comment below on what you guys did, how you guys turned it around, what amazing things started happening for you when you finally put your foot down and you made a decision, you made a decision to move away from your abuser and into something bigger and better. I would love to hear your stories. I would love to hear those success stories. And so will, so would the community. We need to hear more of these positive um, things that come out out of such darkness. All right? So be well. Love yourself. Love life. Keep moving forward. I'll see you guys in the next video.